Hi everyone, my name is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog dedicated to building science and fine craftsmanship. I just did a series of videos on advanced framing and I want to show you that same house and how we insulated it. We're doing really three types of insulation on this house and in my mind there's really no perfect insulation solution for a house. Manufacturers would want you to believe that you just need to use their product but really there's some products that are better for certain applications. So I thought I'd show you the outside of this house uh, first. Um, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but there, that silver facing you see on that right hand side is a three quarter inch polyisocyanurate uh, R Max. It's about an R5 at three quarters of an inch. And the, entire, uh, and the entirety of the house has been wrapped with that where there's siding, where you can see my DuPont uh, drain wrap still in the house. We're going to be doing a uh, uh, exterior insulated finish system, EFIS, uh, in those areas by Stowe. But let's go on the inside now, and I want to show you the two insulation types that we use on this advanced frame house. I'll meet you inside. Okay, so first, let me show you this garage. This is a single car garage, and then I've got a carport on the side. I have living space above us here in the garage. And then, of course, whenever you've got an attached garage, you really want to decouple the garage to the house. And really, in my book, the only proper insulation method for a garage to house connection and a garage with living space above is spray foam. Here in the hot, humid south, open cell spray foam works perfectly well in this situation. We want to make sure we've got at least three and a half inches so we get a total air barrier. And with that, with that amount of insulation, we've got really good coverage here. So we spray applied uh, to the floor underneath us. We've got um, an Advantech uh, floor right above that spray foam and we spray applied at least three and a half inches of spray foam there. And then on this side, we had the drywall crew come and hang the drywall on this wall between the house and the garage ahead of time so that I have a spray foam backer. And then it's probably a little tough to tell in the video, but this wall that's, or this space above that is a truss bay that runs continuous from the house to the garage. And we used a product called Thermaply, which is basically a glorified uh, cardboard before our trades came so they could run all of the utilities. We've got a uh, gas line through there. We've got several electric lines. There's a, a exhaust fan going through there. A couple things like that. And those need to be, uh, those need to be poked through from the trades at the, uh, at the time of uh, construction prior to insulation. And now that T-ply acts as a perfect spray foam barrier. Now let's walk in the house. We did a series of videos on the house not too long ago or a video, I should say, about advanced framing techniques. So this house has all two by six exterior walls, and uh, we use the total fill insulation on those exterior walls. Uh, this is Owens Corning Energy Complete, which does a really good job in very standard stud bays. But then above that, where I've got my truss, uh, or my floor trusses, my, basically my band joist area, that's again an area that really needs to be spray foamed in my mind. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's any other type of insulation that's going to give you the solid coverage that you need in that area. And we really want some air sealing in that space as well because that's a notoriously leaky spot in the house and no other type of insulation is going to air seal. Again, that's open cell foam. Last thing I want to point out here is uh, this is the other side of that drywall wall that I just showed you a minute ago. So we applied that drywall and then we total filled that with open cell foam and now we've got a perfect air barrier there. And the last scenario that I want to show you, if you can pan up on the video, we're looking up at the ceiling on this house. This house has a, uh, a sloped, basically a flat roof, but a sloped uh, pitched roof. And uh, we used five and a half inches of open cell foam inside the house there. And then all those silver ducts you see are within the conditioned space. That's really the most important uh, thing to do if you're building new remodeling in Texas is bring all of your, con your ducts in the conditioned space. And then lastly, on top of the roof deck, we did two inches of rigid polyiso foam on this house as well. So really, I've got a full rigid foam blanket on the outside of the house. And then on the inside of the house, we use both open cell foam and Owens Corning Energy Complete. I think it's real important to, to choose the type of insulation for the specific application. And this hybrid approach that we took on this house, I think is a really good one. It's sometimes hard to find a contractor who can do both. So don't be afraid to get two bids. Have a spray foam contractor give you a bid on the spray foam areas. You can highlight those in your plans and then, give a, uh, then have a blown in blanket type contractor give you a price uh, for your standard two by six netted wall with blown in fiberglass or uh, damp blown cellulose, which is also an excellent product. Thanks for joining me, everybody. We'll see you next time.